Hi folks, it's Moz here and I'm going to build something very special. I'm going to be building a Concorde. Basically, I went to Filton in Bristol and I saw one of the Concords that was built there. It's now housed in a museum in like one big hangar and I had a fantastic day out there learning about the Bristol company. Now, my mother flew on Concorde. She won a trip. They went for to Gatwick, I think it was, and they flew over the Bay of Biscay and they landed in Exeter. And I felt it was time for me to build a Concorde. And while I was there in the museum, they had the kit I was going to build. And here it is. So here we go. This is the Airfix BAC Aerospatial Concorde, I think it is. Tooled back in 1977. This box in here, it's 1994. So inside you'll see that it's 101 to 144 scale. It's a pretty old looking box, but you've got the decals there, which look pretty good. You know, I can't see anything going too wrong with them. They've still got some film on them. So yeah, they have been protected in this box. And uh, we have the kit. So it's quite a long, long kit. But I thought after building the Vintage Classic version, I thought we'll build this and just see whether it's still a good kit. Even though this one here is, was it 20 years roughly from when it was first released and tooled. I know they re-released it again in 2021 as a gift set. So I'm going to build this for you on the channel and let's just see whether it's still got what it takes now in 2023. We are doing one side then the other so you can see me snipping them off the sprue there and just a little bit of cleanup is needed for this so I get the knife and I just scrape away just where the sprue gates were and just any little remnants of flash that is on this kit which is very little to be fair as I said it was 20 years from the original tool into when this one was put out there so it's not too bad I'm clearing up the doors now because it's time to put the doors on and very little cleanup required and you'll see this time that I place the door in position I then get my Tamiya cement and go around the edge with it now this is the only time I do it from the front because I then realize that it's best to do it from behind so you can see there with the knife just because the doors aren't quite there I've manipulated them the best I can now this door here had a little lip at the bottom and it seemed to have fitted better so I turn it around and then in it goes lovely jubbly and I push it in with a knife just to make sure it looks okay they're not perfect these doors they're really not but yeah straight in we manipulate it a little bit then I get the Tamiya cement and then from behind I then glue the doors in very nice indeed you can see it sticking out a little bit as I said they're not the best doors but they they do a job this one fit a little bit better as you can see turned it around you know just to try and see which is the best way it goes in it doesn't tell you so much on the part itself and then in from behind again I put in the glue and it sticks lovely there we go again a little bit of a force with the thumb and there uh, can't say fairer than that it's okay it you know it's 1977 tooling so there's a little bit of give for this one I guess the glass fits perfectly a couple of drops of Tammy around the edge so I don't fog up the glass and then what I'll probably do is get some masco or some masking tape and tape up that glass before I spray it Perfect. Then we move on to the second fuselage and basically it's the same old rig more again. So cut off the fuselage from the sprue, tidy up the edges using a knife. There you go. I'm just clearing up the edges there using a knife. I get my sanding pad out, just go over those little sprue gates there, make it all nice and tidy. No flash on this, believe it or not, it's very, very good. This door fell off the sprue, so I kept it to one side. Bit of a trim up with the knife, and then in it goes. 
Not a bad fit this one. Again, finger on the front, turn it around and then get me Tamiya extra thin, straighten those gaps. Just let it flood, let it flood in. A little bit of manipulation, just make sure it's centre, because I try to get the doors as centre as possible. But I'm really happy with that one. There you are, I'll grab the knife here and I just move it up slightly. There, best I can. Next door, a little bit of a clean up on this one, just where it was uh, cut off the sprue tree. And it goes. Again, you can see like a little lip there, so I push it down so you can see there. So you've got a bit of a gap at the top, but again, thumb on the out, sorry, finger on the outside. Bit of Tamiya extra thin in that gap there. Let it flood in, and it will be all right before we have to spray it up. It doesn't look too bad, but as I said, the doors do need a bit of work. On this kit, the actual there's no wind, there's no glass in the windows, so they're just holes. So the only glass is really at the front and the cockpit. So I wouldn't worry too much about any of the holes there. And have a, if you actually look at the holes, they are all the way through. There's no problem there at all with those holes. No need to clean them up. They they are pretty good. Again, this is the other door in from the back. A little bit of tamir extra thin all the way around and then manipulate it into the centre as you can. This one did wiggle a little bit, as you can see it pushed in a little bit. So I just uh, forced it back through with the knife and positioned it better. And then waited for the cement to set. There you go, see, just pushing it back in. And yeah, just a little bit of a work around on that one needed. You could even put some masking tape in behind. And then finally the third door, the final door I should say, in it goes. I did it the wrong way around, I think, and I had to turn it around. Did I turn that one around? No, I didn't. Now, I did turn it around previously, but I've edited that out. But yeah, they they fit in the hole. They cover the hole. I don't see why next time they, they just don't bother. Just, just make the tool and leave the doors in position. And then if somebody wants to cut the doors out, just, you know, give them that option to do so. You know, using recessed panel lines. Let them cut the doors out if they needed to. But there you go. There's a fuselage done in the final bit of glass here. There's one more piece there you can see, which is for the cockpit. But yeah, fits in nicely. In it goes. Put my thumb in it. You can actually feel it press in, so it, it's quite secure. And then grab a little bit of Tamiya extra thin cement just to dab it around the edge of that glass to hold it into position. Glue it in, basically. And that's it. That's both halves of the fuselage done. And uh, yeah. It's a really, really good project so far, and I'm really enjoying it. Then it was time just to check out the fuselage, and I noticed when I took it out of the box that the tail and the nose, some of them were bent because it, they weren't quite, the box wasn't quite big enough for the tooling. So you notice uh, on the tail there, there's quite a bit of a bend there. So I was trying to see if there was a way of straightening it out before I started cementing. But I thought it wasn't too bad. And I was just hoping that with the cement going in position, it would straighten that out. Anyway, you notice there are locating pins on one side of the fuselage. And you've got locating pin holes on the other so i test fit like i always do just give it a little bit of a push together just to see how well the fit is and to be really fair it looked really good and once i got to that position i was able to put some of the contactor in the located pin hose a lot of people don't do this but i do just habit i don't know but i tend to do it i've never had an issue of a plane or a fuselage coming apart once I've done that. Just that little bit of extra security on putting the two halves together. So the halves go together really nicely as you can see. They butt up quite well. There is definitely a seam line there's going to be, isn't there? And what I do is I put some tape around the fuselage just where hopefully where the locating pins are and the holes are just so that gives it a bit of stability before I start getting the Tamiya extra thin out to go around the whole of the fuselage. 
obviously tab your tape, put it in position, and it also just tries to help it in a way, keep it butted up. So there I am with the tabby extra thin, going down through the line there, putting bits in, bits out, you know, just pushing as much cement in as I can, not over flooding it, but you need a good bit in there, especially in the nose end and the tail end. There you see me there on the nose, just putting in a couple of strokes of Tamiya Extra Thin into the gap there. Turn it over and do the underside as well. I do one side then the other, that's my general rule of thumb when I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin. I go underneath then or on top depending on which way around I'm doing this. I can't remember as I'm filming this. The time you're extra thin there is in the gap, tape on top, and then I just push the tape all the way around. And because it's quite a long nose, I decided to put another piece right on the very end there where there is a locating pin, and I'm hoping that will push the nose together where it was bent. Then on the top now, going down the middle of the body, just putting in some time you're extra thin in the gap, and then again, masking tape on top. Basically, rinse and repeat. There's the tail end. Do you notice that I put some contactor in there just because it's a big surface and I want to get some inside. So I put a knife in and just give it a little bit of a movement and put some of the contactor in that hole. Then we start on the underside, again, plenty of uh, tammy extra thin there. And because of that little bend, I made sure that it was nice and tight there to hopefully straighten out that little, little bend at the end. And then on the way through, we then put some more tammy extra thin all on the underside. And basically that is all the fuselage put together. Now onto the wings. Wings are in two parts. Snip them off there using my tammy cutters. and very little cleanup is required. Now, you will be thinking, I will just put glue all the way along that little gap there. No, what you need to do is actually see where the wing fits because there's a bend in the wing, it goes quite fat in the middle. You're basically butted up against two raised edges of the inside of both parts of the wing. So quick tidy up with the sanding stick, you can see there it's quite you know it does bulge out in the middle and then what you need to do is get a needle applicator I'm using Humbro this time uh, precision poly cement I'm just going on the groove there. there's actually a groove there you can actually push the needle into and then follow that line all the way up to the very end then all the way down to the rear of the wing there nice put a nice big dob in and I say you don't want to put any more glue on that wing apart from where the ridges are and then you put the glue on top of that ridge there because there's another ridge on the other part of the wing and that fits on top and that gives it the width of the wing and you can see me there just putting it on top all the way along using the needle applicator and it's a really good cement this humble one don't be fooled this poly cement is very good because I've already dry fit this, I know that it fits a bit peach because I've already fitted it once, dry fitted it and it fitted lovely. So this time you can see it just goes in position, a little bit of movement just to get it into that position and there you go. Perfect. I'm quite happy with this. Tammy a tape now, all the way around just to secure it in position to help it dry. And there you go, flick it around, brilliant. And because you're pushing that bottom part of the wing into that groove, it seems to hold in position quite well. Top of the end there, so the root of the wing there, you know, a little bit more tape. Then I put a clamp on, I just moved that decal sheet, it was in the way for some reason. And there you go, onto the next wing. And, and basically, again, it's rinse and repeat. Clean off the wing, use a knife here just to get rid of that sprue gate. There you can see Airfix Products 1976 on the wing. And again, get the glue all the way around the edge. It's so simple. Just push the needle into that little groove, into that ridge. 
and you see perfectly you then go on top and around again on top of that ridge again because there's another ridge as I said on the other part of the wing but the wings together and again I put a clamp on this time at the very back and then on with the tape I decided to put a clamp on the front of these as well just to give it a bit more pressure on the on the on the joint glue away the three bits of the concord ready for assembly and gluing together after leaving the concord overnight to dry let the cement set it was time then to remove the masking tape it was quite simple just to remove each bit of the masking tape and opening up the bird ready to see how we fared I can already see there's a ridge on the top of the plane I can see ridges underneath where it hasn't quite butted together as nicely as I'd expect it was more raised along these seam lines and I felt the only way to really get rid of these seam lines was to use my Citadel seam remover tool and basically it's just a big flat piece of metal in a handle you can pick them up for about 12 quid I think and what I was doing I just scraped off the top there because I noticed that there isn't any recess marks it's all raised so just quickly scrape back the majority of it so it's almost flush and then get my flory sanding stick or any sanding stick and then just rub it up nice giving it a good shine making it nice and smooth and I always check how smooth it is by just rubbing it just above my lip I pull up to my mouth and I rub it above my lip and if I can feel it smooth there <laughs> it's smooth it works I promise you it's not you know it's not nothing new I know people do that they they check smoothness by rubbing it just above their lip and it works a treat and you can just see me there I've just scraped off the raised bit and then just sanded it through I've had to do it on the bit of this plane not so much underneath because a lot of it I don't think you'll see but on the top here it's quite simple I just pull it back and you can just take a little slither off it just makes sanding a little bit easier just being careful there not to go too deep with it obviously but yeah just sanding it that sand stick I think is uh, 350 grit on the blue side and I think it's about a 200 on the sill on the grey side maybe a 150 but I use that sparingly because it's quite a hard pad. The blue pad is, is very soft, so it does conform to the curvature of the fuselage. Then I noticed that some of the doors were a bit raised as well, so I started to work on the doors just a little bit. I didn't take too much off because I still need to see where the doors are so we can put the decal around the door, but just enough. This kit is old. It does need some TLC when you build it, obviously. It's a very nice kit, don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying building it. It's very simple as well. But the doors don't fit correctly. It, it is an old tool, and I think a manufacturer should really be retooling this with 21st century technology and get it looking better. It, it's deserved, it really is. So whether Airfix or Revel want to bring out a 140, 100 one to 144 or one to 72 scale concord that's gonna be a big bird as well yeah that will be perfect but on top there i'm quite happy with the finish on top you know this is all pre put in the primer on because i'm going to give it a primer coat anyway and just see how it fares if it needs some filling i'll fill it if it needs some more sanding i'll sand it but you know i to be fair by looking at it feeling it with my thumb feeling it with my lip <laughs> my lip yeah it, it's it to me it was it's a good enough job for a, a kit of this age you know it, it's one of them but it's lovely though don't get me wrong I'm thoroughly enjoying it but it isn't just stick together and paint you've got to really work at it then on to the wings I uh, let's get on to the wings now so again we removed the masking tape on these wings delicately there with a knife <laughs> so this one we need a little bit of sand in so there you go we just uh, removing some of the cement that seeped through there it doesn't take very long it's uh it wasn't too bad but i did get the old sanding stick on it give it a good old rub down to make sure everything's looking pucker 
ready for attaching to the fuselage and both of the wings needed this work doing as well so a quick sand down and then we try and fit it dry fit because remember don't ever blame the kit always dry fit because if it's dry fit you can see where the little gaps are so and to be fair as you can see even on the dry fit there it went together pretty well I was very very happy with that in so much as when I put the other wing on I kind of decided sod it let's just get this cemented together and let's get it all ready for uh, priming so just quick check here making sure the edges the leading edge there and the trailing edge all matches again next wing all sanded up as well all the mask and tape removed clamps off and this is the dry fit and to be fair I was really happy I can't you know I wasn't going to complain. You can see how smooth the top is there on the fuselage where I've sanded it down, use, you know, using the sanding pads. But yeah, it all goes together quite nice. I was really happy with that and I knew that just a little bit of cement would do the trick here. Now, I didn't use the extra thin, I used the Tamiya cement, which is in the white bottle. I always think that because you button up fuselage to the root of the wings, a thicker cement's required. So, as you can see, we just Dot, just dotting it on the part there just enough and then just brushing it in so that it gets a good coverage inside the groove there as well or inside the hole I should say and just you know giving it a nice thick coat because it's going to need it on this because they're quite long wings I'm not talking width ways I'm talking the length of the actual fuselage the the wings are quite long stubby but long so again cement on the actual uh, wing roots there into the hose and you'll see how well it fits together you can see that the, the join is pretty good just use a little bit of tape to keep hold it in position I should say a little bit of tape just to secure it but I was very very happy with the joint just make sure where the trailing edge is just make sure you get that in nice and straight push it together and you're pretty much done I put a bit of tape around it always dry fit in these situations pushing it together perfect and I was extremely happy with that and again it would be a case of removing the wing using that white Tamiya cement all over dotting it in just where it's important don't put so much shit it's going to spill everywhere because that's not the, not the idea it's just enough so that the wing does fully bond with the fuselage. And then plenty of masking tape just to keep it as secure as possible. And again, I'll leave that overnight and then it's all a case of just letting it dry, letting it set, ready for priming. So just Tamiya surface primer on this, just gave it a couple of coats just to uh, give it something for the paint to bind on and then I started to get out the white gloss which is the Tamiya one, uh, there's lack of paint and I just started to spray on top of the primer there. I, I gave it three coats in all just to uh, give it a good surface there and I was quite happy with the finishing and then onto the engines I also sprayed them up, I gave them three coats as well just a, a slight dusting on the first time and then straight on with the second and then a final third coat so I've sped this up now these are the decals um, I had to jump, double check myself because it was in two pieces on one side and complete on the other for the uh, the flag on the back a uh, little bit of micro sole it's like micro set on this just to help it to lay nice on the tail there but these decals, they're very old, but I was quite impressed. There wasn't that much of an issue with them. Some of them did break up, unfortunately, but I got one side looking pretty good. As you can see there, they just lay down nicely, just nicely in, uh, just around the doors there. So I wasn't too worried about hiding any of the, of the gaps there for the doors because the decal covered it. Now, I should have put the door on second after the the British Airways swish there I got that wrong anyways this is my new favorite tape it's Nicoban I think it's called and uh, so I sprayed this with uh, just a black 
uh, lacquer paint from Tamiya just went around it all but I was just really impressed with this take because the line is really crisp <laughs> and uh, you can see I'm just giving it a good coat there it covered that covered the white really well considering uh, I think it had two coats in the end just a nice uh, start just to uh, get it down and then I went over it again after I'd done this bit I did inside as well just to uh, give it some shading sort of thing inside but yeah it covered up really well this paint I, I, I am liking the Tamiya lacquer paints indeed so that's all sprayed up now so the uh, the covers there the engine covers are done and here we go the reveal for the paint for the for the tape on the paint just so look how crisp that line is I was so impressed whoops uh, the stick fell off there but yeah the actual paint look at that crystal line now I was really happy with it really really happy with that line and uh, if you can see it for sale I had to get mine shipped in from Japan because I couldn't get it in this country it's, it's at Nishaban I think it's a Nishaban paint uh, Nishaban tape so yeah there you go pretty happy with that pretty happy with how that looked there you go there's a there it is uh, made in Japan Nishaban Nishaban tape Anyway, it's time to put the engines on the Concorde now, and the fit was pretty good to be fair. Wasn't too much aggravation to get them in. You can see it just slot is there's some little nubs there that it fits in nice too, and then you get your Tamiya extra thin and uh, glue it all together. Yep, just brush down each side and uh, apply some sort of pressure, obviously, with either a clamp which I've done here you can see and uh, just leave it to dry again you do the same on the other side you just just slots in nice press it down firm add some of the Tamiya extra thin And then apply pressure using the clamp. Now on to the variable exhaust nozzles. We've got to put them together. There's a few pieces there. They're not the best. They're really not. You've got to work at these. As you can see, I've already primed one side. Uh, and I used uh, gun metal on these. I sprayed them up gun metal in the end. But yeah, they were a little bit fiddly to put on there. Like there's, uh, as you can see, there's like little nodes, and then you and then you fit the piece into these little nodes, and then leave them to dry. As you can see, I started here putting the undercarriage on while that was all uh, gluing up and getting ready to be sprayed. And it was quite simply just putting the wheels on. There are little holes there for the undercarriage to go in. And then one wheel on, put the other wheel in beside. I did cut the axles down just slightly to make the wheels uh, close together. Um, and it's a lot easier then to glue. And then it was just a case of gluing them in and then just touching up the wheels or the tyres, I should say, with a hairy stick. Now time for the nozzles, they just slip in and then you glue them in position. They are a bit of a faff, but um, they do go in in the end and I just use a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin to keep them in position. And they look all right with that gun metal, that's what I used, gun metal on that one, and I was quite happy with it. Then it was time to put in the final decals, which is this one that goes on the, on the engine. So a little bit of water down and then put the decal on just slide it into position a little bit of micro set after and it's done same again on the other side just basically put it in position and lay it down flat using a cotton bud and then I put some micro set uh, on top of it just to make sure it binds onto the part then the final decal is this one that goes on the underside of the wing 
I just slid it off here off the paper and positioned it just above the the fins there they, they go they're, they're very old decals you have to you know be a bit patient with these ones but they did uh, go down as well as can be expected as I said one side was better than the other which I'll show in the in the reveal at the end where they went wrong now because there's no cockpit detail I cheated and I decided to as you can see there paint the 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 screen completely black there's no point in in having it over there's no cockpit detail whatsoever and actually I thought it looked pretty good with it being that 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 black so it gives it a little bit more oomph if you know what I mean just it just stand out a little bit and then I just glued it in position and that was the last thing I did to this apart from give it a gloss coat after Here's the finished Concorde. Myself personally, I was pretty happy with it. It does look good. It looks like a Concorde. There are some inaccuracies for this kit, but fair enough. It's you know almost 50 years old, and it does go together quite well. Easy to spray up. It's basically white all over. You know, once you put the primer down, undercarriage went on pretty easily. The engines went on pretty well. I've just sprayed it all up and uh, there's a few gaps there, etc. So I didn't fill any of it. I just wanted to do it as a out of the box kind of build. And you will have fun building it. You know, you could go to town on this and, and do all sorts with it if you wanted to, to make it look absolutely pristine. But for somebody who um, was building it, bit of a time frame to get this done because I was setting it up for one of my yearly challenges and ultimately for what you get you're going to get a decent model out of it I would love to see a manufacturer retool it for the now you know the Revel one is out of date the Hella one which is a 1 to 100 scale or is it a 1 to 120 scale they also do a 1 to 72 which is even bigger but it would be great to see this kit retooled and uh, more accurate indeed. The new kit that FX have brought out uh, called the Last Flight of the Concorde, they've redesigned the, or they've re-manufactured the decals on this because these ones here, they did kind of break up because of the age of it. You know, it's 1996, this, uh, this tooling, um, or should I say boxing. And so the decals did kind of fall to bits. But uh, one thing I did like is that the, the doors cover up any of the gaps <laughs> or any, you know, once you sanded them all down flat, you put the doors on and it's absolutely fine. As I said, there's no cockpit detail. So I sprayed this black in the end of the glass black because you don't need to look inside it, but it does give it a bit of a finished look. Don't you agree? But yeah, absolutely fantastic. And so it's got the uh, GBOAF, which is the same one that's in Filton and like I was saying, because this is the new challenge, here's the woven patch here. If you build a Concorde, and I've got some of these left, you know, what's now with this is, this has been filmed in June of 2023. If you build one of these Concords and contact me with the pictures, with the box art and the pictures of you building it, I'll send you one of these patches, okay? And until eight, uh, sorry, the uh, beginning of August of 2023, there is a discount code to get 15% off the last flight of the Concorde kit from FX. FX have supported me with a discount code for the channel subscribers or viewers, I should say. And if you want to build this kit, there is a discount code in the description box below. 
Okay, and that's basically my Concord build. If you liked the video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, ring that bell, click all, and you'll never miss another video. Any questions, any comments, leave in the box below because I do reply. And a huge shout out to my channel members. Thank you for supporting me. If you'd like to become a channel member, just click join below and select which membership tier you have. Again, uh, thank you again, Airfix, for the discount code, but that will end August the 1st, 2023. And if you do build a Concorde, send me via email the pictures, the box art and pictures of you building it. I will send you one of these patches free of charge. I've got a few here. Hopefully I'll have some more. But there you go. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like my channel and like to watch more, click here for my last video and click here for a playlist of other model builds.